Hi everybody, this is Steve Ludwig, host of Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture and the Beatles Hour with Steve Ludwig at planetludwig.com. Here's an interview we did with Paul Peterson on September 16th, 2014. It's from show number 58. To hear the entire show, check out the menu at planetludwig.com. And now, please enjoy the interview. Our guest right now is well known to so many of us. He is an actor an activist, an author, a singer. He's truly a renaissance man. I think most of us probably know Mr. Paul Peterson from the Donna Reed Show as Jeff Stone. Uh, nowadays, he is president of a very important organization called A Minor Consideration. We're going to talk about that with Paul Peterson in depth in a few minutes. Right now, it's a pleasure to introduce Mr. Paul Peterson to you. Paul, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, Steve, it's my pleasure. Believe me, it is. Good well, to talk to you. And, and same here. Um, I, I do want to make the gist of our conversation about a minor consideration, but can we reminisce for about five minutes? Oh, sure, let's do. Uh, it's good to remember that a minor consideration just didn't explode out of the ether. It is the culmination of, frankly, my life. Mm. Now, uh, from... How was your uh, how was your relationship with the crew on the Donna Reed show? From all indications, it seemed to be a pretty good, pretty good uh, family on TV. Well, in fact, it was. I mean, first of all, uh, Donna Reed was a woman I called mom. She was an Academy Award winner. She was the the star of the show and my boss. Uh, but having said all that, what she was was a very nice lady who was comfortable uh, raising a teenage son. And I understand your relationship with Carl Betts was, was pretty special as well. That was special as well. Carl was the most unusual man I had ever met. He was an artist. He was a, a, a Carnegie Award winner. In fact, he shared the Carnegie Award with Robert Ludlum, the novelist. Yes. He liked mm -hmm. painting, he liked poetry, he loved acting, and he loved Shakespeare. And it was, uh, it was a real treat for me to know a man like that. Sounds like a real renaissance man, Carl Betts. Well, in fact, he was. Now, yeah. he couldn't throw a football, and uh, <laughs> I, you know, I wouldn't want him to be uh, watching my back in a bar fight, but <laughs> it was, he was still a cool guy. Yeah, he was an, he was an artsy type. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> uh, I, what I'm amazed at is that with a minor consideration, and you know, Paul, I keep mentioning that, and we are going to get to it, but why don't you, uh, could you give our audience a little background, because I'm going to be referring to that as we reminisce also. Please tell our audience about a minor consideration, which is at a minorconsideration.org. Great organization. Paul, could you give our listeners a little background, and then we'll get into well, it more sure. in detail. Uh, almost unbeknownst to me, as I grew up, especially after the Donna Reed Show went off the air, there were two uh, former child stars, Mickey Rooney and Jackie Cooper, who were looking after me. And Mickey Rooney in particular came to my house when things were going real bad in my mid-20s and said, Paul, get out of town, get your education, find something else to do, because they're not going to let you work. Jackie Cooper, who, of course, sustained his career, uh, was uh, not quite so blunt, but he kept saying to me, get out of town. You have other skills. And I did get out of town and started to uh, write and publish books. And one of those books, in fact, the 10th book, Steve, was a book called Walt, Mickey, and Me. Great book. And I took a look back at the Mouseketeers with whom I had served back in 1955. And I discovered to my shock that despite very different life patterns, there were certain commonalities in our lives that deserved attention. And once I had become uh, aware of those commonalities, I started to look deeper into the lives of former kid stars. And if you can just jump ahead 10 years, I suddenly lost three good friends of mine, Trent Lehman, Tim Ovey, and uh, most famous of all, Rusty Hamer, uh, all committed suicide. 
And I realized that instead of collecting stories, I had to do something. Because mm-hmm. I, I could have intervened in Rusty's life. I knew where he lived. I could have easily gotten to his home in, in DeRitter, Louisiana, and I didn't do it. Rusty, of and course, was Danny Williams. Show. And, yeah, right. And, uh, Danny Thomas. Yeah, so, Danny Thomas. And I told my wife that morning, if there's a kid actor in trouble, now this is January 19th, 1990, if there's a kid actor in trouble, I'm going to get involved. And uh, it's been true since that date. If, if there is a, a, if a red flag goes up, I respond. What's nice is that a whole bunch of other former kid stars, about 600 in, in all, uh, they respond as well. We're, uh, we're pretty vigilant and we're interventionists and, uh, we are not afraid to tackle the structure of the laws that uh, are such a such a terrible constricting influence on working children. Can you explain that to me, Paul? What's what's constricting about that? Well, I, here's the problem. Back in 1938, children in the entertainment business, as well as kids in agriculture, were exempted from federal child labor laws. Now, what that means, if you work in a state that's pretty progressive, like California, which has good child labor laws. Uh, you're fine. But what if you work in North Carolina or a state like Iowa? Or what if you're the uh, eight kids on John and Kate plus eight working in Pennsylvania where no one uh, is there to oversee the implementation of the laws? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is you're at risk. So we have been fighting for, for quite a number of years now to end the exemption to federal child labor laws for all working children. And people think, oh, you're just talking show business. No, I'm not. There are 800,000 children picking our crops. In other words, the food on your table is probably picked by an underage person. Oh, my gosh. There are also uh, 300,000 kids in sports who aren't protected. It, it's wrong in 2014 for these five and a half million children to be exempt from federal standards. And I say to people in my speeches, I am always on my soapbox, we take better care of animals than we do children. Mm. Uh, it this sounds like this is a rhetorical uh, comment I'm going to make, but... Or a question, why is there such an absence of conscience among adults with, with these kids? Uh, is there well, an answer? It, it, Steve, it's pretty simple. Kids don't have money, and they don't vote. And, uh, you know, it's like the proverbial squeaky wheel. Uh, kids don't have an am- avenue uh, with which to complain. And if parents and adults, all adults, lose their focus that our most important job is raising the next generation, well, guess what? Children uh, uh, can be shuffled to the background. Mm. And all you have to do is look at the graduation rates these days from high school, and you'll see that it's happening right in front of us. It seems uh, the almighty dollar and politics still rule (laughs) Humankind. I guess it's going to be like that forever. It's, it's well, it, it is. It is until you put things in their proper perspective. Uh, what if we tie teacher salaries, at, but more importantly, their pensions, to the graduation rate? I mean, I don't get it that a person who can fail at a job for twenty-five years gets a lifetime pension. That pension ought to be tied to the graduation rate of that teacher. Well, wouldn't yeah. that be amazing? Let's see, fifty percent graduation rate. Uh, your pension is worth fifty percent less. There, uh, I mentioned politics before, Paul. I'm a I'm a um, I'm a retired teacher myself, and I must tell you, there's politics even in the school system where where some teachers um, might be given what would be considered lower achieving students just to get that teacher. I mean, I know it sounds uh, you know in- incredible, but even in education, children are not put first. Of and, course, um, we all understand it because yeah. we have come to understand that uh, organized labor seeks to protect itself. 
Government workers who are unionized particularly seek to protect themselves. Well, guess what? It doesn't take much of an imagination to look at Lois Lerner from the IRS to understand that her political point of view and her union affiliation meant that she was savaging the very notion of government service. And that's what happens with all institutions. That's what happens. I don't care if it's the teacher's union or the local school board. As an institution, the primary focus is the welfare of the institution, Mm -hmm. not the people it serves. Paul, I couldn't agree with you more. I taught for 38 years. I just retired this past June because the the way education is going right now – The kids, these poor kids in our classes are so far down on the pecking order of importance. It's 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 all a bureaucracy. But we could go on with that forever. If I may, (laughs) I want to uh, quote a couple of things Um, on September 18th, 2001. You had planned to give a uh, speech uh, for for the Children's March and Vigil at the United Nations. But 9-11 happened. uh, So, yes. That speech didn't come about. But if I may, may I quote a couple of the things you wrote in that speech? I think it's, it's sure. paramount to what we're speaking about. Paul Please Peterson. Do. Yes, Paul Peterson wrote something fundamental to the continuance of humankind has been lost, and that is the welfare of the next generation. The children who are alive today exist in a world that has forgotten the importance of allowing children to be children. To this end, I will echo the words of one of America's founders. I pledge my life and sacred honor in the fight to end the war against children. Uh, Bless you for that, Paul. But uh, that is all too true, isn't it? What's going on? Yes, it is. It's it's, uh, child soldiers. It's the... um Uh, 80,000 kids in West Africa who were picking our chocolate, our chocolate, mind you. It's the 800,000 kids who are picking our food. It's the kids in sports. We have lost our way. You know, the Native Americans had a wonderful uh, measure uh, for which they judged decisions. And they said a decision of importance should be weighed down to the seventh generation. In other words, they were looking at their great-grandchildren times six. We have forgotten how to do that. We have forgotten to look at after the welfare of, of, of posterity. What will our great-great-great-great-grandchildren have in their pocket? Will they have a nation without borders? Will they have endless taxes? Will they have a, 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 a what amounts to a royal class uh, sucking on the government uh, uh, teat, uh, mm-hmm. ruling their lives? Something's wrong. What's this the is answer, fundamentally Paul? wrong. What's the answer, Paul? I mean, it's 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 impossible well, to I, give an answer in a, in a sense or two. But no, 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 no. what what does everyone do with answers. Okay. You don't vote for a single incumbent politician. And if push comes to shove, if this day comes, millions of us, as happened in Egypt, need to surround our, our, our state and, and federal buildings and tell these people, you don't get to work here anymore. You Bravo. are done. Bravo. The pilot, yes. We are ruled by politicians. And again, we can go offshoots on all these different things, but it's scary how much politics is is a part of our lives. And it's – well, I want to – let me give you a a for instance or – now, you mentioned before, Paul, that – it was a a nice situation on the Donna Reed show. So you've seen what can work. You've seen what can work with with a child actor such as yourself and, and Shelley Fabre as well. What have you seen or heard? What's going on with with child actors and actresses that 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 appalls you? Some of the things I'm sure it's not just well, I, and what can look, be done again? Well, I, I wish I could get uh, the adults who surround young performers to sign a a pledge of personal responsibility because uh, you look at the Disney kids, uh, all of a sudden they go from having a wonderful tweener fan base between the ages of 7 and 12 
to uh, doing pole dances on on mm -hmm. uh, music award shows. <laughs> and I tell people over and over, some adult had to go out and secure that pole. The choreographers, the costumers, the directors, the the the, the uh, music teachers that surround these kids need to be held to a higher standard of conduct because this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. Look at Miley Cyrus. She mm -hmm. goes from this little tween queen to all of a sudden doing very suggestive poses for Vanity Fair. Her dad was there. Her mom was there. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother was there. And no one holds them to account. Maybe we're going to have to pass some laws. But the most dangerous, dangerous thing, Steve, is this unrestricted uh, social media. It is mm -hmm. scary. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that used to be secret are secret no more. And the kids don't seem to be trained yet into guarding their reputation. The things kids are posting on the Internet and Facebook and Twitter and all the rest, that it takes your breath away. And, and it's there for eternity. I mean, the, the kids, kids yeah. tend to live for the moment, but if they post a picture or a comment, that's in cyberspace forever. That's exactly right. It never goes away. And look, see, I'm living proof. The Donna Reed Show went off first-run television in 1966. I'll be 69 in two weeks. Happy and the Donna Reed Show is still on the air. Mm -hmm. And and available on DVD and, uh, yeah. Um, I think, you know, when I see my I, – I taught eighth grade, Paul, like I had said. and. Yes. When I was a kid in eighth grade, if I snuck a peek at a Playboy magazine, that was hot stuff. There yeah. is, like you, like you said, there is just – there's nothing that's left to the imagination as long as they can get on a computer. I mean and, – and, and the statement you had made in, in the speech that I had written, um, we've forgotten the importance of allowing children to be children. Um, yes. For a, for a, a kid, a couple to walk to a school dance holding hands, that was everything to me. But now it seems there's so much pressure put on them by the media, by their parents. Will it ever get back to the Donna Reed Show era, which was a, a beautiful well, era in our, in our childhood? Well, it would take a, 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 almost an act of God to do that. But the truth is, the power is in our hands. Parents have forgotten how to say no. No to the cell phones, no to risque uh, uh, entertainment content. Uh, no, you can't go buy Miley Cyrus's latest record. Just no. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, parents aren't around much anymore, so they're not there to say no. You know something, Paul? I, I noticed, too, when kids are changing classes in the hallway, kids are still kids at that level. A boy likes a girl, yeah. and he sees her coming down the hallway. He blushes. She kind of gets nervous. There's that basic loveliness of childhood that's there, but everything that's around these poor kids just drags them down and... It, you know, you just wish it could be, it, it's, it's uh, like I said, again, it's rhetorical, but you wish it could just be children being children. I understand. You know, in the old days when we had the Hayes office, that was the censorship board, uh, there were certain images that were verboten. You couldn't show them. The bad guys didn't get to win. Mm -hmm. uh, now what do we have? We have grade schoolers, not even junior high schoolers, but grade schoolers having sex lessons in their own bathrooms. Outrageous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone, we're speaking with the wonderful Paul Peterson. Uh, we know Paul Peterson from the Donna Reed Show, the Mickey Mouse Club, a short stint as your book, <laughs> Walt, Mickey and Me, so, so aptly described. Um, and check out paulpeterson.com. For those of us who are spelling uh, challenge, it's S-E-N for Peterson. Paul, your fans yeah, know right. that. But <laughs> S-E-N, and it's a minorconsideration.org. I, I, I right. can't say Minor, much. Minorcon.org, or they can go on Facebook, and it's we're easy to find. Yeah, I know there's also a link on paulpeterson.com as well to a minor yes, consideration. Yes, there is. Um, real quickly, Shelly Fabre, do you stay in touch with Shelly? 
Oh, of course. She's as close to me as my blood sisters, Pam and Patty. And, of course, you may remember Patty. She was the sure. little adopted. Uh, orphan girl on the Donna Reed show for she played three Trisha, years. right? She played Trisha That's for right. a few years. Yeah. And How's I, Patty doing, by I, the way? Steve, I still call her Trisha Bug. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> and she probably gives you a, a punch in the shoulder anyway. Yeah, um, well, yeah, like I tell people, all of my sisters are now younger than me and because they have very sharp elbows. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I also want to let our, our listening audience know about the Donna Reed Foundation for the Performing Arts, of which you are uh, highly active. Could you tell us a minute or two about the Donna Reed yes, Foundation? I, Donna Reed, and, and later in her life, uh, always explained that the most difficult time in her life was when she came to Hollywood as a, a, an ingenue in uh, 18 years old and didn't really understand how stiff the competition was going to be. Uh, so we, for many years, gave the largest scholarships in the performing arts to kids who had all the talent in the world but didn't have the solid professional advice that all children need if they're going to contemplate uh, pursuing a career in the entertainment business. Look, the entertainment business is a tough racket. Um, there's a lot of broken hearts. That's why they say, you know, Hollywood Boulevard, the street of broken dreams. Yes. You need to be prepared. Have an alternative. Have a plan B. And yes, you can still enjoy being able to sing and dance and act. But boy, you better be solidly grounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I bl there's also a link on paulpeterson.com to the Donna Reed Foundation as well, I saw. That is that um, is correct. Yep, but pretty much all facets of my life are linked together. Yeah, it's, it's a great website, everyone. Please visit a paulpeterson dot com. And um, before I say goodbye, uh, we introed this segment with with my dad, with your song, my dad. What was it like being a pop star, a pop singer well, star? I, look, it, it was fun. Ricky Nelson blazed the trail, and and I was. Um, dragged along in, in pop culture. Uh, I love to sing. Uh, I love the songs I got to sing. And in particular, when Barry Mann and Cynthia Wheel uh, brought me this song, My Dad, I was honored. And here we are all these years later. And you know what? It is a, it's become a Father's Day classic. It, uh, and of that, I am very proud. You know, um, you mentioned Man and Will. Uh, you also had a, a, a very big hit with another great songwriting team, Coffin and King, with Keep Your Love Locked. That was another that is wonderful correct. song, Paul. Um, well, I yes. got to work with the very best, and, and, uh, and I appreciated it at the time. And looking back, I appreciate it even more. Well, Paul, we appreciate all you've done for us, entertainment-wise, and especially with a minor consideration. Um, everyone, once again, go to paulpeterson.com, and it's um, minecon.org? Minor, minorcon.org? Uh, minorcon, right, minorcon. We had to okay. shorten it up back in the day. <laughs> and, and everyone, as you go to Paul Peterson's website, you'll see all about the Smuggler series, books he wrote. There's so much we could have covered, Paul, but I want to thank you for the time you gave us, and... And I, I take my hat off to you for the wonderful, wonderful, selfless work you're doing with a minor consideration. And I thank you. Steve, thank you very much. It's been my honor. Believe me.